So, um, therefore, I can say, up here when I pair this with this, oh, sorry, this with this, I should say, this is this complex number paired up with its conjugate, I should say, um, this equals um, two times the real component of that complex number, e to the i, two pi on nine. Right, uh, that's going to be what happens when I, this is what I get from this term and this term. This is, this is the conjugate right here. So I might just highlight that in blue so you can see where I've gotten that from. Okay, so that's where I get that from and um, all the rest of the terms sort of follow suit, right? So this is two times the real component of and I'm gonna um, take this four pi on nine, leave that the same, but the next one, I can actually do a teeny bit of simplification here. So this is the real part of e to the i, I'm gonna write this as two pi on three because um, I know what the uh, real part of e to i two pi on three is. It's just gonna be cosine of two pi on three, which is just a, um, a simple exact value I know. Uh, I'm almost there, I've got two times the real component of this last term. Um, what am I up to, eight pi on nine? that's all equal to negative one. So at last, this is my final step, right? I've still got all this complex number stuff flying around, but because I have said, I'm now just gonna take the real components, I can now just write this completely in terms of cosines. So I'm going to have, you know what, I, I'm gonna uh, write the two cos, two pi and nine here. Um, I can see I've got this common factor of two all the way through, so um, I'm going to factorize that shortly. Um, I've got two cos four pi on nine, um, I know what cos of, of 6 pi on 9 is, it's cos of 2 pi on 3, which last I checked was negative a half. So that gives me 2 times negative a half here, which you can see is going to cancel shortly. Um, and then 2 cos 8 pi on 9 equals negative 1. All right, things are looking good. I'm going to uh, divide through by 2, so that gives me cos of 2 pi on 9, cos of 4 pi on 9, um, I've got my uh, negative or minus a half here. I've got my cos eight pi on nine there. And then because I divided everything by two, I've got negative a half there as well. And I noticed that if I just add half to both sides, I get that term canceling. So this is very promising, right? I've got this term and make sure I leave enough space. And then I've got this term and this equals zero. And this looks fantastic. It looks, looks so close to what I want to get. Except you then just cast your eye back because you always got to check like, I've done a lot of simplifying, but have I actually got what I asked for, was asked for? I've got my cos two pi on nine. I've got my cos four pi on nine. I do not have cos of pi on nine, nor do I have it over here on the right-hand side. I have zero on the right-hand side. What's going on here? Now, at this point here, you might be able to say, oh, okay, I know what's happening um, identity-wise. Um, I can see how I can change the cos eight pi on nine that I've got into um, something resembling this cos pi on nine. I can do simplification. But maybe you don't see it immediately. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is because we haven't looked at it for a little while, I'm gonna use an identity um, that relates to this and, and enables me to change my cos eight pi on nine to my cos pi on nine, or related term, um, in a fairly seamless way, but without sort of pulling a rabbit out of a hat. How is eight pi on nine related to pi on nine, um, which is the term I've got related to the term that I want? And the answer is, cos of eight pi on nine is the supplement of, uh, sorry, eight pi on nine, just the angle itself, is the supplement of pi on nine. So therefore I can write, I'll just uh, leave these terms out the front here. In fact, I feel like I'm gonna need this space. So I'll move back up. I think I've got enough room here. Uh, I'm going to write this cos eight pi on nine. I'm gonna write it in a somewhat awkward form. I'm gonna write it as cos pi minus pi on nine. You can see that's that supplementary relationship there. Um, it is the difference between uh, pi and pi on nine, that's what a pi on nine is. But this here is just the subject of a fairly standard tree expansion that I've got. This is in the form cos of a minus b. So therefore I can write it as um, cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So uh, these terms here remain unchanged at the front, but I'm going to write cos pi cos pi on nine plus sine pi 
sine pi on 9. So this is my standard expansion of this cos a minus b term. In fact, what I'll do is just to make it really clear, well, not delete it, that's not what I want, uh, just to make it really clear where these terms have come from, you can see that is the expansion that leads me to here. Okay, now what can I do here? Well, um, thinking back to my simple graphs, right, cos of pi, um, the graph of cos starts at 1 and by the time it goes halfway through the period, I'm down to negative 1, uh, and that then sort of likewise sine pi, it starts at 0, it goes up, comes back down to 0. So this term will equal negative 1, this term will equal 0, so I'm going to get, once, once again for good measure, um, this term, a pair of terms out the front, this will become minus cos of pi on 9 and this will become 0. And now at last to get what I want I'm going to uh, add cos pi on 9 to both sides. So what that will leave me with is this term over here but instead of minus it's going to be equal to cos pi on 9 on the right hand side. This, this is as required. Huh. Take a breath. Well done. So uh, what did we do here before we go on to the final part? Um, we had to recognize, uh, number one, how to use part B, um, putting in this omega, but putting it in a different form just to make it easier to use. We had to recognize some stuff with conjugates here, and that uh, using conjugates was our way to get rid of the imaginary components, all of them, um, to get to this line with all of our cosines. And then we had to do a little bit of fiddling with some exact values, um, and also with this, uh, this sort of extension one trigonometric identity here. So now we're ready for part D. It says, deduce that uh, cos pi on 9, cos 2 pi on 9, cos 4 pi on 9 equals this. Now, you'll notice that unlike with parts A, B, and C, there seems to be a much more clearer line of logic. Um, part A um, comes from here. Part B, this factorization, um, the only way you can get to this thing with um, you know, the 8th power is from this thing with the ninth power. You can see the way we factorize it. Um, and then part C just tells you, hence, you have to use part B to get to part C. But then in part D, they kind of say, hey, uh, here's this other result. You've got the same angles, cos pi on 9, cos 2 pi on 9, cos 4 pi on 9. But what is the relationship between this and uh, A, B, and C? Well, in fact, as you're about to see, we don't have to use the results in A, B, and C at all to prove part D. It just seems kind of nice that we can relate these. Um, it's sort of like something to do with the sum of these angles and something to do with the product. So how am I going to do this? I'm just going to do this in the way that a classical trigonometric identity is done, which is um, have a look at my left hand side, my right hand side, think about which one is more complicated, and then try and simplify it from there. The left hand side is a mess, right hand side is just a number, so I'm going to start with the left hand side. So what I've got is, uh, that's the next question I'm going to do, I think I need an extra page. That'll do me. Okay, so this is part D. Um, what I'm required to prove is that cos pi on 9, cos 2 pi on 9, cos 4 pi on 9. I think I'm supposed to prove that that's equal to an 8. Let's just double check. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to begin with the left-hand side because um, as we've noticed many times before, our brain is pretty good at simplifying complicated things because that's what we spend a lot of our time doing in maths. Not so good at complicating simple things. Though some might argue we've been doing that a lot in complex numbers this topic. So how do I have a go at this? Well, what I'm going to say is there's a trigonometric identity that allows me much like here to deal with um, this product of cosines. I've got three, that looks a bit weird, I'm going to have to do this a couple of steps at a time, but uh, the result that is going to help me here is going to be the product of two different uh, cosine terms here. You can see uh, if I've got cos A times cos B, it's equal to half cos of the difference, cos of the sum, and I'm going to have to do this um, a couple of times because I've got so many terms here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, these two terms over here on the left hand, or the right hand side rather. I'm going to choose this as my a, this as my b, and essentially what is a, a minus b, what is a plus b? Uh, it's, this is the difference between a and b, this is the sum of a and b. So I'm going to use that as a simplified way to write this. So yeah, I'm just going to keep on going. So this is cos pi on 9 hanging out the front. And then, in place of this product, I'm going to write this, uh, this sum here. So, it's going to be multiplied by a half. Uh, here it comes. So, <clears throat> cos of the difference in the first place, what's the difference between 4 pi on 9 and 2 pi on 9? It's just 2 pi on 9. Uh, that's the difference. And then I'm going to do the sum, so that's going to be plus 
cos of 6 pi on 9. Now I noticed this before, this is 2 pi on 3, so this is relatively easy to simplify out with an exact angle, right? Um, let's, let's keep going, but I've got this half sort of buzzing around the front, um, cos pi on 9. Uh, this cos 2 pi on 9, I don't have an exact value for that, so I'm just going to leave it. Cos of 6 pi on 9 is cos 2 pi on 3, which I saw earlier on, is minus a half. So that gives me that term there. And so now I'm going to have to expand again. So what have I got here? Um, I'm going to have uh, this, this pair here. So it's going to be, in fact, I just write it without the parentheses in the middle. So that's what I get from the first one. Uh, and then on the end, I'm going to have minus a quarter cos pi on 9. So that's from a half cos pi on 9 times negative a half. So that's looking good. And what I'm going to do is a second time I'm going to use this same identity. I've, I've got another cos A, cos B. So I'm going to do this difference and sum business one more time. So um, watch out, you've got a half already out the front and that's multiplied by a half. And then I've got cos of the difference, which in this case, the difference between these two is pi on 9. And then uh, I'm going to have the sum, right? So that's the a plus b over here. Um, the sum of pi on 9 and 2 pi on 9 is 3 pi on 9. So again, this is going to be a nice exact value because cos of 3 pi on 9 is cos of pi on 3, which I'll come to shortly. Uh, and then this term is still hanging out on the end here. All right, let's start to tidy up this mess. A uh, half times a half is a quarter multiplied by cos pi on 9. That's promising because I've got the minus a quarter cos pi on 9 at the end. Um, and then um, what have I got here? I've got plus a quarter. Um, what did we say cos pi on 3 is? That's a half, isn't it? So I've got a half here. I'll put that in brackets just to separate it out. And uh, one more time here, that minus a quarter cos pi on 9 is uh, there at the end. So I've got this term which is exactly going to cancel with this term. So this equals um, a quarter times a half, which is an eighth as required. So look, my no complex numbers. Um, I just used um, the result that they handed to me and then I, I worked very methodically with this identity uh, using the difference of some of those angles. So. In summary, uh, when you have a look at questions like this, right, don't be intimidated. Uh, it does look weird when you have a look at this off the face of it, like where do I begin? But think about all of the knowledge you have access to, your trigonometric identities, which you've seen me use repeatedly, um, the periodicity of trig functions, which um, is something we take advantage of in uh, complex numbers over and over again. You saw me do it in part A uh, and also in part B when I was, no sorry, part C when I was simplifying things out. So these, these sort of foundational building blocks are really important to you know, free up your brain to then you know, sort of focus on the complicated parts, uh, the complex numbers that you've seen in this question.